Hello and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is Zach Kersner. I'm an Ableton Certified Trainer. And for today's quick tip, I want to talk a little bit about envelopes and LFOs and everything in between. Now, most of you guys probably already know that an LFO is going to create a shape and it's going to loop that shape or repeat that shape up and down. And you can use that shape to modulate a parameter. Whereas an envelope is going to take an attack, decay, sustain, and release. And it's going to play it one time every single time you play a MIDI note. And then you can also use that to modulate parameters. However, we can start taking a lot of our envelopes inside of Live and making them behave a little bit more like LFOs. Now, I started thinking about this when I was having a conversation about the differences between Wavetable and Serum, both of which I think are excellent synthesizers. But in Serum, we have start with three envelopes and four LFOs, although you can add more if you want to. Whereas when you are working inside of Wavetable, you have your three envelopes and you have two LFOs, and that's kind of what you're limited to unless you want to use some audio effects like either Shaper or LFO. These are both excellent Max for Live devices that allow you to put LFOs anywhere you want. But I want to talk specifically about how we can take these envelopes and start making them behave a little differently and act more like LFOs. So to start off, uh, let's pick a different wavetable here. And I want to take this envelope and loop it. So up here in the top right corner, we have this little drop down menu where we have options for none, trigger, and loop. Trigger is going to make it so that regardless of how long you play a MIDI note, it's going to go all the way through your ADSR curve, which is not really, re really relevant for what we're trying to do here. And then we have loop mode. So when loop mode is turned on, it's going to basically ignore your sustain, and it's going to take the timing of your attack, decay, and your release, and loop it based on of those values. So if I want to apply this to something like our oscillator position, I can turn this up. And if I just start pressing and holding down a note, It's now looping it. And again, I can start adjusting the timing here. To make it basically behave exactly like an unsynced LFO, where we can customize the timings of our ADSR all individually. On top of that, one of the benefits of doing it this way is I can adjust the curve, which I can't do in a lot of the LFOs in live. And keep in mind, the release still matters here. So if I have a really long release, it's going to take a long time to loop or if I have this shorter, it'll loop faster. So that's basically it. That's the concept here. And let's try this out on a few different instruments in live. So if we take a look at operator, uh, if we go into, say, the volume envelope of this operator right here, operator B, we have this loop mode down here where we have four different options. We have loop, which is going to behave basically exactly like the loop mode we just saw in Wavetable, where it's going to take your attack, decay, and release and loop those. So here's what it sounds like without the loop turned on. And if I turn loop on, it starts looping, again, based off of your ADSR right there. Uh, on top of that, we have beat mode. This is going to loop it, but it's going to be based off of the, an increment of the grid set right here. So right now, it's going to be 16th notes. Uh, and then we can change the timing here to be whatever value we want. And then we have sync mode, which is going to be a lot like loop mode, except for the difference here is that beat mode, it's going to start triggering your loop your, whenever you play a MIDI note, whereas synced mode, the timing is going to be set to be synced with the tempo of your song. And then last, we have trigger mode, which works exactly like the trigger in the wavetable. So we have basically three different options for looping here. And one of the cool things about doing this in something like Operator is you have seven envelopes in Operator, all of which can be looped. So we have a volume envelope for each one of our operators. We have a filter envelope here, filter frequency envelope. We have an LFO amount LF envelope here that can be looped. And we have a pitch slash auxiliary envelope that can also be looped. So you have basically essentially up to seven extra LFOs using these envelopes as LFOs. Uh, if we take a look, look real quick at sampler, if we go to our, our volume envelope, that can be looped. We can go to our filter envelope, that can be looped. And these all have the same settings as operator. Our extra oscillator here, that can be looped. And our extra envelope here, that can also be looped. So tons of options for looping envelopes here. If we take a look real quick at analog, uh, we have basically have our amp envelope and our filter envelope. Both of these can be looped, although these behave a little bit differently here. You can see this one is listed as A, D, and then R. So this is going to loop attack decay. And then when, when you let go of, of the MIDI note, it's going to do the release. This one's going to do, it's going to loop attack decay and release. And then when you let go of the note, do the release. This is very similar to uh, the ones we saw in Wavetable and Operator. And this one is going to not loop. It's going to play attack, decay, sustain. 
And then when you let go, it's going to do attack and release. So these two are options for looping here. It's just labeled a little bit differently than some of the other envelopes. And this is going to be true for most, but not all of the envelopes inside the instruments inside the live. So if you were looking for extra ways to get a little bit of modulation, extra ways to like have looping modulation as opposed to having one time, live gives you tons of options. You just need to know where to look for it. So that's it. Hopefully you find that useful. Hopefully you enjoyed watching that. If you did, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. I release videos every Monday and Thursday about different topics I think are interesting with Ableton Live. On top of that, feel free to check out our website, catalyzeacademy.com, for info about classes and lessons and workshops that we offer. And again, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you again soon.